I have a strip of flash paper on the bench here that I cut out from a larger sheet and cut it so that there was a little tab sticking out every so often along the length of the strip. And aiming at it, I have an optical sensor in this aluminum box, and the sensor is attached to the oscilloscope. So let's see what happens when I light the flash paper. As you can see, the flame is larger when it gets to one of the tabs because there is a, an increased amount of fuel there. And as we can see in the oscilloscope, there's a slight uh, change in the signal where we were burning one of the larger pieces of flash paper. So what we've done is effectively encoded information into the strip of flash paper. I originally got this idea when I was searching the web for another topic and came across something called info fuses. This is a uh, project started by a group at Harvard, and their idea was to take a strip of flash paper like this, and flash paper is just uh, pure nitrocellulose. You basically start with uh, paper and you nitrate it using sulfuric and nitric acids so that it burns very cleanly and very quickly. Uh, anyway, so they took the strip of flash paper and added to it drops of metal salts along its length. So maybe you've seen the classic chemistry experiment where you turn a flame uh, a different color by adding metal salts. So for example, if you uh, soak a candle wick in potassium, uh, potassium salt, it burns purple, and if you use strontium, it burns red. So if you added a little drop of each one of those metal salts along the strip, as it burned down, the, the flame color would suddenly change and then change back. Uh, the reason that this burns with an orange flame is because of sodium ions that are just present in the, the washing process, like it's, it's basically just a contaminant. So you always have that color, but if you add just a little drop of potassium right here, as the flame burns along it will change to purple briefly and then change back to just the background orange color. The info fuse group pointed out that you could actually multiplex this. So instead of just putting purple here and green here and red here, you could actually put the same colors on the same spot of the strip. So you could have purple plus red here and green plus purple here. And by using different metal salts, um, you always get exactly the same color. So it's easy to uh, put more than one color at the same spot. And then if you have a very sensitive color detector, as the fuse burns down, you can very accurately find which colors you are getting, and you can encode quite a bit of information that way. So I thought it might be interesting to encode information in sort of an amplitude scheme instead of the color scheme that the Harvard group used. So I tried making strips with different size tabs on them and was able to you know, kind of encode information. You can basically see the, the location of the um, tabs that I cut onto the strip here. But what I really wanted to do was to have more than one strip interact with each other. So I thought it might be possible to have information encoded into a strip by giving it a certain tab pattern and then laying it next to another strip with its own tab pattern. And by setting the whole thing on fire, there might be some sort of an interesting computation. And I thought about this for quite a while, and I'm not sure it's actually possible. I wish I had a better background in computer science or, or information theory. Um, it would seem like the energy from the flame might actually provide the energy for computation. And if you were able to actually encode the, the information in the strips in some interesting way, you could actually get a real result out of it. I started thinking about what properties a flame has that would actually allow the computation of information to occur. And basically the idea is that the flame is just able to ignite things that are near it. It's not like a mechanical lever, so you can't really build a, a mechanical computer out of it, or at least not in any way that I could see. And so really the, the best thing about this whole burning paper situation is that it's sequential and the, the flame provides this readout effect just because there's sort of more paper in one area than another. If we were actually going to build a computer out of this system, I think it would have to be a multi-flame process where one flame would have to burn certain links between the two strips, and then you'd have to use another flame to, to actually get the readout. Although, like I say, I thought about this for quite a while and couldn't come up with anything. So I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Is there a way to actually do computation with nothing but flash paper, basically? Now, I have a vinyl cutter, and I was thinking of cutting a fairly intricate set of tabs into these things, so I, I can do that. Uh, another slightly disappointing thing is that the resolution is quite poor, so the tabs have to be very large and spaced fairly far apart for this system to work. Let's take a look inside the aluminum box. I only needed to add this uh, metal box because I was having problems with interference. And so inside here, it's a very simple circuit. It's just a 9-volt battery, 
and a resistor and a Hamamatsu S7815 photo sensor. This is uh, an amplified photodiode and so it's very easy to use in circuit because you just need one resistor and then you have a nice high voltage signal coming out and it's fairly sensitive. I'll put the link in the description. Let's try another one. This time I just laid another strip of flash paper across the, the main strip. Another thing to note is you can't put it flat down on the bench because the bench will actually suck the heat away from the flame front too quickly. So you actually have to bend it into a little triangle to suspend itself above the bench surface and that will keep the flame front hot enough for it to continue moving. So with this one you can see the signal from the optical sensor here. And the background uh, is not quite as steady as you would think. Like as it burned down to the edge here we were really dropping off. So the uh, Harvard group's approach of using colors to encode information is very smart because they can subtract the background sodium signal and uh, still you know, obtain the color signal just fine. Okay, well let me know if you have any thoughts about computing with fire. I think that's a pretty cool topic, even though I'm not sure there are actually any practical applications. Uh, playing with this flash paper is a lot of fun. See you next time. Bye.